it's Wednesday, so aloha, y'all. I just came back from Texas, so I've still got the y'alls in there. But welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Our uh, sponsor is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. We've had a fantastic legislative brief uh, Friday last week, and that, that'll be coming online at some point in the near future, we hope. And um, HEPF, the forum, also gets funding from my organization, uh, the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. So we provide funding to help help us along. So today I'm very uh, pleased to have Riley Saito, who's the Deputy Director of the uh, Department of Research and Development for the County of Hawaii. And uh, Riley's gonna talk to us about um, some of the innovative things that we're doing to help uh, hydrogen, and in particular, hydrogen buses. So the title of our show today is Converting to a zero emission bus fleet quickly, as opposed to waiting for years and years as the funding cycle goes up and down. Riley and his team have come up with some very innovative ways to um, fund this, and I'm not gonna steal his thunder and talk about it, I'm gonna let him do the talking. So it's a really a made in Hawaii uh, deal, and I think uh, Hawaii is going to be able to uh, share this with the mainland people. So Riley, let's talk story about your uh, your innovative financing um, system. Well, it's, it's it started a year ago um, with looking at how on the building and facility side over the years there have been progress by government agencies uh, going into contract for performance services related to energy. And in talking with investors, the investment community, there was nothing like that that uh, for vehicles that re or related to mobility and transportation. So uh, we actually took HRS 3641, which was for building facilities and with energy savings contract and tweak that to include the characteristics of mobility of vehicles, meaning uh, equipment that actually utilizes, uh, provides transportation on, on our highways, our roadways. And it made it through uh, the House, the Senate, the conference committee. The governor signed it into law on June 26th. Now, what this allows is the actual third party uh, financiers to provide vehicles, vehicle fleet for the government agencies, along with fueling and charging infrastructure. So that is, uh, and in re for those familiar with power purchase agreements, this is more fashion to be compensation to the investor by vehicle miles traveled. And in the case of mass transit, we're looking at passenger miles uh, traveled or provided by the vehicles. The, and that's an interesting approach in that the investor themselves would be motivated to increase the passenger uh, ridership. And that would provide the asset owner and motive, motive to have different types of vehicles, different types of routes, uh, having perhaps the, the first and last mile be more of a dynamic online reservation type situation or a phone call and, you know, I need from point A to point B and you have a vehicle that's actually what would be within a certain area and that vehicle is responsible for getting the these various 24-hour notice reservations to the bus and from the bus. And so the asset is owned by a third party who's motivated to actually increase the passenger miles, have 50 people on the bus, not five people on the bus. Right. And by getting five or, or 50 people on the bus or 40 people on the bus, you're taking people and cars off the road and so that's helping us decarbonize our energy system because all of a sudden you don't have single people or just two people in a car driving from A to B. You have a, a really good bus service that that's people's first option is, I want to you know, take the bus because it's convenient and clean. 
silent because it's an electric drive bus, um, all those good things. Exactly, and you know what's really critical for uh, is the characteristics of our workforce and the long trips that are taken on the Big Island due to the size of the island. And the, we we're doing we're about to issue a final uh, roadmap, a road the final report on a roadmap we've been working on, and that study shows that 38% uh, of the population workforce travel more than 50 miles. Wow. From work. Did you say 38%? Correct. Wow, that's a lot. Because we have our work centers, uh, you know, Hilo, Kona, Pohala Coast Resorts, and, but the affordable housing is over 50 miles away. Right. And that's a big economic uh, hit on people. I mean, they have to have the car, they have to maintain it. They have to pay for gasoline uh, or, or fuel, and the fuel prices are variable, and who knows what they're going to do in the near future or even the medium time future. So this is like a really good uh, service that we can provide our, uh, our, our population, our working population. Right. And, you know, getting the fleet uh, clean will, will certainly, our, the greenhouse gas inventory that we just issued, we're issuing this week, um, it's on our website. We just put it on. That uh, transportation accounts for 53 to 54 percent of the greenhouse gas wow. gases emitted on this island, and it's due to the sun and the long commute. And you, you take that workforce commute, but you also take into account all mobility of products and services. Right. So that the main port is in Hilo, and yeah, it. That all has to be transported. The, so, there's one landfill, and all the trash has to be transported. Right. So, so this could apply to more than just uh, public transportation, though. This can also apply to <clears throat> all the county fleet vehicles, like the garbage trucks, and like you said, the, the hauling trucks that haul uh, refuse from uh, transfer stations over to the landfill. Um, your fleet of uh, light-duty vehicles uh, that are used... Uh, or just day-to-day -day business of conducting the county's business. And also, I understand there's kind of a, like a ride-share program when those vehicles are not being used. So why don't you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, the, the approach uh, we're taking is to uh, utilize the clean vehicles that are owned by a third party, asset owner. And so I'll just say asset owner from here on. The asset owner has the a core tenant of the county to utilize the the mobility device or equipment. It might be a car, might be a truck, might be a e-bike, a power assisted bike, might be a golf cart, whatever it is. And that is utilized by the county Monday through Friday between 7.30 and 5 every day on Monday through Friday. Now. You count weekends and holidays, and that's on an election year, it's 117 days in which those vehicles will not be used. And if you look at each Monday through Friday, that from 5 p.m. to 7 a.m., 7.30 a.m., those vehicles will not be used. And so as a third-party asset owner, you have your Monday through Friday tenant, uh, tenant anchor tenant, so to speak, of the county that has requirements and, and same, you know, approaches. It's online reservations app. It's not assigned to one department or one area. It's assigned, uh, basically the reservation system drives where the asset needs to be for the county to uh, have mobility to do its work. And the rest of the, the time, you know, every day between 5 p.m. and 7 a.m., it can be utilized by other uh, government agencies, public, private. Um, you could have some arrangements, say, for Uber and Lyft drivers to drive clean vehicles right. that are, are up to date and um, versus driving older vehicles that are, you know, gas guzzlers, so to speak. You could um, have senior citizens, social services, food delivery. Um, all these other types of services that are now provided 
social services that are provided by different departments, different agencies, right. you know, house, aging, housing, uh, Department of Health, uh, and and so, have them have the vehicles available. So, so now, like a nonprofit so, for supporting the uh, Kapunas, like on the weekends when the, the county workers aren't working, um, some a nonprofit or an organization that supports the uh, elder community could use the transit vans to truck people around to various events or, or to provide additional services when um, the county is not there available to um, fill their need. Right, exactly. And it, it could be a situation where, like for students that have after school programs, STEM programs, sports, right. they, the, the, bus, the school bus system you know, they, they are catered to and directed to the hours of the school. But a lot of the uh, students who are advancing in other things need mobility to and from home or to get back to home at 4.35 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Right. And so those vehicles could be utilized to, uh, again, like van pool, car pool, you know, uh, transport multiple passengers from the school or that activity to their home. So uh, talk to us a little bit about how the Energy Policy Forum helped you develop this program. I'm thinking, for example, the peer exchange uh, project that the Policy Forum funded. Uh, could you describe that and what, the, uh, what it was and what the results were? You know, it's, it's interesting because it, we're on, we are following this roadmap that as uh, HRS 3642 is being developed going through the legislative session, it looked uh, pretty positive. And so about in April or so, um, the State Energy Office and uh, Lupono Initiative, we got, along with myself and the uh, other members of the team, we got together and applied for a Rocky Mountain Institute, a mobility innovation laboratory workshop in August. And we actually were awarded that. Um, and we had mapped it out because many times when new policy comes comes on board, it is you go for the policy, but then you don't in concurrently go for implementation. Right. And the, where the vehicle mobility <laughs> rubber meets the road is when you implement, not when you just uh, plan things. So it was to concurrently plan a, the implementation. So the governor signed the bill on June 26th. The Rocky Mountain Institute was uh, uh, innovation lab workshop, uh, had folks from DAGS, from Department of Transportation Procurement, from, we had a couple of investors, we had Blue Pony Initiative, myself, the Climate Change uh, Commission coordinator, and uh, really discuss what were the roadblocks, what are the hurdles, what, what is the best path forward to use existing procurement along with the new HRS. Right. And the main takeaways was that we need to um, pretty much get more people involved, the right people involved, get an understanding, elevate, and collaborate across silos of government procurement, the fleet managers, the energy people. We all, you know, energy people are jumping in up and down about clean energy, and the fleet managers are, are still tasked day to day to maintain the fleet, keep the vehicles running. While the procurement office is going, well, what's the best energy vehicle to get? Okay, what I'm going to I'm going to call a little time out right now because we have to go okay. to break. So we have a one minute All break, right. and we'll continue on with this because I think it's really important to talk about the templates you developed and how that's carrying on. So we'll be back in one minute. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Duration. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I will be hosting a show here every other Wednesday at 1 p.m. and we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii.
Hey, hello everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Okay, we're back from our break live here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And I have Riley Sato, who's telling us his very unique program he's developed, very proactive. And this is how we're going to get going quickly to convert our fleets over to clean energy and lower to zero emissions. So Riley, you're talking about coordinating with all the various silos, the various, you know, uh, uh, bureau bureaucracies and how we can smooth it and you're being proactive and getting this uh, going in parallel with the legislation so you're ready to hit the road as soon as the, uh, the uh, governor signs off on the bill. So uh, I'd like you to tell us a little about uh, how you develop these templates and I understand that one organization in Hawaii has already let out the first RFP so over to you. All right. so with the peer exchange, we, we got the various groups together, mainly the fleet managers who operate the vehicles for the government agencies, the procurement uh, agents or management from each of the counties along with the state and with the energy people and uh, that have been looking at EVs and, and fuel cell vehicles and other zero emission type mobility devices. And so, we got together for the peer exchange and really came out with, um, you know, to actually listen, learn, and share among the various groups. And interestingly, the main uh, takeaway was that we all have the same concern and we all have the same problems that, that uh, questions that need to be answered. And so with that, um, you know, we, the main next step was to identify target fleet, what are we going after? Um, if you want, you know, heavy duty pickup trucks, they don't exist in clean vehicles yet, you know, mainstream. But, you know, what are we going to do and how are we going to map out the rollout? And so, but you have to have the target fleet analyzed and the actual savings, uh, cost savings analyzed and, and quantified for, for budget and finance. So, we are maintaining that that group, that network of the participants, and we are going to continue to collaborate, share. Um, it's, for instance, I, I found this uh, work with the city of New York on maintenance of clean vehicles. They did a, a study of over 2,000 vehicles, uh, hybrids, um, electric vehicles, combustion engine vehicles, and they came out with a, a, a study on the cost of that. and. You know, I sent that out to the group. Um, we're fortunate enough to actually get the, the Excel spreadsheet with all the costs, the breakdown by vehicle, by type of maintenance that was required. Right. And that has been very uplifting, uh, advancing the knowledge base on, on you know, maintenance, which is what is the maintenance of the clean vehicle. So the indicators are that the EVs, pure EVs, were 200 to $400 a year. And to maintain, and the internal combustion engines were sixteen hundred to seventeen hundred. Wow, uh, dollars. That's like four times, more than four. Times. Right. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Now, if you, if you, if you take that to you know, I don't know, a thousand vehicles, about a hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. And and so, yeah, you know, that's just in the maintenance cost. So, right. and there's fuel costs and other things that we, we need to analyze, we need to quantify properly to accurately measure the cost savings. So and oh, in sorry. parallel to that, we'll measure the, the greenhouse gas reduction and monitor that. Okay. So talk a little bit about the templates now, because I think this was very uh, unique and uh, thoughtful. Yeah, so, um, Department of Transportation Procurement Officer uh, Robin, 
Shishido Aramawi. He attended the Rocky Mountain Institute uh, conference workshop, and he attended the peer exchange. And so he's the first toe in the water, so to speak, on, on the joint procurement. He's named uh, the, all the counties and, the, and other state departments to be included in this uh, RFP. And the RFP is very broad. Um, I think the dead cutoff for submittal was January 14th. So whatever names got submitted, got submitted. So. But the RFP itself is uh, very broad. It gives the general parameters of what the vehicles should should be capable of doing, the type of charging that is interest, we're interested in, and uh, really allowing the market to then respond to that in what's available and how to handle vehicles vehicle fleets, what, what types of vehicles are available, what type of charging infrastructure can be offered in a um, service contract. And so we put it to market, which is one of, one of the, you know, to see what the market says. Right. So, like you said, the bids are just due now or just uh, just completed. So we'll, we'll get, we'll, we'll see what kind of response uh, they came back with. Uh, were there any kind of questions? Were there a lot of questions, or was it pretty straightforward and uh, kind of painless for the for the bidders? Or did bidders have a lot of questions that they were asking about the RFP? Well, it was different because it was you know first time for um, this type of yeah. pretty open, broad you know what can you provide, right. and and so there is a few. Folks wanted to know if they could sell the government agency internal combustion engine. That's not what <laughs> like the RFP asked for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, oh, you're you want you want 50 of these uh, gas guzzlers? No, no, thank you. But um, I I have not heard the final list of questions. Uh, right. We went through that. I, I haven't been directly involved in right. to stay out of the keep the procurement process, you know, within the procurement sure. offices. Yeah. Right? So, so the theory um, is is that the template, you know, it may be modified based on some of the feedback we get, but that'll become a template for all the government departments in Hawaii to be able to use that as a model for how they go out and do their procurement. And also, I understand. Right. So, Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's exactly that, where, where we have, as the County of Hawaii has the option to, to utilize that procurement. Right. They don't have to. And that, right. 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 The same token, also, the contract is also a template of, okay, so you put out the RFP, but how do you write a contract that meets, um, you know, financial uh, oversight requirements, et cetera, et cetera. So that's like the second part of that whole component. Right. And then we're going to, you know, advance our knowledge base on, on what's needed. We're going to listen to the market. Um, you know, the automobile dealers, the manufacturers, the financiers, the, uh, when you call it, when you go into fueling and charging infrastructure, it's a whole different t technical group that needs to be involved. Right. And when you get into, if it's electric vehicles, then you're getting into the network charging. And that type of advancement and, and telematics and performance and so I'm naming things that that are you know bringing up things that are very diverse in in that is that different companies have they, they're experts in that but to resolve and advance to clean transportation these all these aspects need to be it needs to be considered. So we want to see what's out there. Right. So, uh, Riley, what's uh, what's next? Uh, how how where are we on this roadmap that you developed, and what do you see the next some of the next major steps? Not getting into necessarily into the nitty gritty of it, but like top level view. What are we going to be doing? We're going to continue to see what the what the market has right. out there. What options are you know what 
what um, and more than likely what the, the county would be doing is issuing an RFI right. uh, specifically instead of an RFP specifically an RFI for uh, transformation of fleet vehicles to zero emission an RFI for mass transit to transform to clean transportation and an RFI to produce fuel for transportation on this island. Right. So what's been the reaction from the administration? So, uh, you can speak specifically about the county of Hawaii. Obviously, you don't know about the other administrations. But has this, has this been well received? And, and what's the feedback you're getting from, from your political masters and, and the, you know, the executive as well? I, I think it's been very positive. Right. Um, one thing, you know, it, in working on this, it, it is different. It is out of the box. And I haven't had less than 100% support from within the county, and uh, which makes my job very enjoyable. Right, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, we have a big challenge with uh, public transportation, as you know. I mean, uh, I, I think the number, they only have seven or eight buses that are actually operational on the road. So, um, what kind of priority are you going to be giving to transforming the, the, the bus fleet? Well, it's one of the three I named. So I, we, we want to do these things uh, in parallel, and we are following the master plan uh, for the multi uh, mass transit multimodal master plan. Right. And that is the guiding book, so to speak, to recovery for right. the uh, mass transit administration here. But if there, but there's no opposition to actually breaking out of that if it advances the ridership experience, the availability, the reliability uh, of mass transit uh, services. And it, uh, so we're doing it in parallel. Okay. And, and as it advances, if we can get gain traction on the clean, clean vehicles, then, you know, if it works, then we'll keep going. Okay, so we're in our last 30 seconds. Is there any final message that you would like to uh, put out there, Riley? Yeah, uh, real quick. Part of what's driving all of, behind all of this is social equity, is that mobility has to be, clean mobility has to be provided to the 48% Alice community on this island. Right. If not, we have zero, zero, or below zero chance of transforming anything to 100%, clean, otherwise, any other way. So you let's do it, your, your... and let's do it quickly. And thank you so much for your leadership. And that's a wrap. <laughs> so aloha, everyone. Aloha. We'll be back next Wednesday with uh, a next an, another guest. And I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, pass it on to your friends. People have to know about this kind of stuff. So once again, from Hawaii, the clean of, state of clean energy, aloha.